these bland statements. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Mr. Zillis said that uh, the US emphasis was on oversight, uh, which meant uh, whether the surveillance was legal, constitutional, under US law, and of course a desirable policy. Uh, they don't, of course, uh, seem to be concerned with whether it's legal under any other law, whether it's EU member state or third country law. Um, perhaps the United States thinks that there really is only one form of law, and that is US law, and that all other laws are simply quaint tribal customs that don't really need to concern them. Uh, part of the problem, of course, is that some of the access gained uh, has been used by using technology to bypass the data passed under this agreement. Uh, and that, of course, would be unaffected by any negotiations or by any response from the EU. Uh, as Mr Zillis said, the US has the technology to intercept communications that are not sent to the US. Even if the agreement were to be suspended tomorrow, that wouldn't prevent the US from acting unilaterally. Uh, in my view, the greatest hope is a political one of a backlash from US citizens who cannot tolerate the intrusive actions of the National Security Agency, if only because, in the end, it will be used against them too. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs Lutford. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry I didn't hear the first part of Mr Nemitz's uh, comments, but I just wondered if um, you could tell us whether you've been surprised by the acknowledgement by the US Treasury in their reply to Commissioner Malmstrom. Now, I know you're in the other DG, but I specifically want to ask you in DG uh, Just whether you've been surprised by the U.S. Treasury's acknowledgement that SWIFT data is obtained outside the framework of TFTP, and that is what the reply from Mr. Cohen says. Uh, they mention subpoenas. Uh, they don't say whether they mean them to SWIFT itself or to uh, financial in individual financial institutions, but they do mention subpoenas. Unsurprisingly, they are silent about whether they are also encompassing NSA upstream interception. But can I ask you, would you regard it as a breach of the SWIFT agreement if there were continuing uh, subpoena requests or subpoenas, or subpoenaed orders to obtain supply of SWIFT data? Or in your view, was SWIFT meant to be all-encompassing and to, to replace and, and displace any ancillary subpoenas. And secondly, if there was direct access by intelligent NSA or other intelligence agencies, is that out with the scope of EU law? Is that nothing to do with EU law because EU law does not regulate national security and intelligence agencies? Thank right, you. What is your legal assessment of all of this? Next speaker, Mrs. Morvai. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Well, I also missed the, the early part of proceedings this afternoon um, because of other things which were going on between uh, 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, sadly. The EU was um, expressing criticism of Azerbaijan because they are they're, um, abusing human rights. Now, there's something a little bit tragicomic, tragicomical um, about all of this, whereby over lunch, this uh, we spend our time doing that, and then afterwards we come back to the afternoon's uh, business. I don't think that we really need all these. Uh, resumes of um, American legislation and indeed uh, the findings of all the courts in the United States uh, of America um, dealing with EU citizens who have been uh, subjected to espionage. It seems to me that uh, certainly we need this document as um, uh, European lawyers um, reading through this, we find very strange things in the, in the papers which we have uh, received today for this meeting. Looking through this, looking at the FISA document, for example, on page 21, it says that when data is collected, 
the information may um, be useful to counter terrorism at some stage in the future and therefore this justifies any collection of information because it may come in handy. Now perhaps that will wash under American legislation but it wouldn't stand up in a European court. Um, for example, perhaps uh, if certain kinds of child pornography were acceptable in America, I think we've got to protect children in Europe, in Europe nonetheless. And my conclusion is that um, yes, let's look at the acceptability or the lawfulness of certain things in the US because they've got a particular uh, take on human rights. That doesn't mean that we should slavishly accept their standards. I think that we want to maintain, uh, we want to defend victims. Yeah, we are publicly elected and therefore we have the right to know what our administrations do. And if America is our friends and the U.S. Uh, authorities are our friends, we should have all the information so we can judge. Because I don't think, frankly, that an oral statement that, from the Americans saying what we are doing is legal is good enough. Because what we need to know is what they interpret with that. And we can only have that if we have the access to the documents. And this mass surveillance, people don't trust them anymore. So only if we know what they're using the law for, we can judge if it's really legal or if we need to change the law to clarify what's legal or not. And I'll just give one example on that regarding trade secrets. They say, oh no, don't worry, it's, it's forbidden. Well, actually, if you read uh, paragraph 1833 of their own Economic Espionage Act, it says this chapter does not prohibit any otherwise lawful activity conducted by the government. So they, the government is exempted. Anyway, so what value has such an oral statement then? Thank you. That's uh, exhausted our speaker's list. Um, and um, I'm going to ask Mr. Nimitz to reply. And I'll, I'll add in one element. You mentioned that Congress is also, mm -hmm. members of Congress are also participating in these sessions. That's a question that we might want to answer to as well. Yes, uh, on the last question, uh, President, <clears throat> we have met separately in Congress staff members of the Intelligence Oversight Committees of the Senate uh, and the Congress, minority and majority uh, staff, uh, for one hour uh, for an exchange of view, but they do not participate uh, in the government-to-government uh, -government, uh, discussions. On uh, Mrs. Sippel's questions on uh, uh, limitations on strategic uh, uh, surveillance without any suspicion, uh, namely the question of uh, uh, the transatlantic cables, but the first problem is that we actually do not know uh, uh, more from our conversations with the U.S. in terms of what is actually happening there or not. They neither confirm nor deny. Uh, taking data from uh, the transatlantic uh, cables. Um, uh, the uh, U.S. government uh, in our meetings, the Department of Justice, is interested uh, in, in what they call sort of best practice um, uh, uh, surveillance law, um, and that's why they very proudly presented to us uh, the impressive number. I think that's what I wanted to uh, refer to, the impressive number. Um, I didn't want to give a qualitative judgment on the oversight mechanism, but the impressive number of oversight bodies uh, which they have in the Department of National Intelligence, in the DOJ, uh, uh, within each of the agencies, they have the fiscal, uh, FISA courts, within Congress. Uh, we were told that in Congress there are 30 staff uh, available to uh, uh, the um, uh, intelligence oversight committees of both houses to, to carry out oversight, and we received uh, uh, some comparison on the accuracy of which we cannot uh, uh, have not checked uh, to, to European member states. Um, so um, there is, uh, let's say, um, uh, also in, in, in an effort, I would say, to deflect um, 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 uh, 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 the, 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 the fact-finding uh, activities, uh, always a question back to us, how are you doing it in Europe, which we normally say, well, that's not subject of our uh, conversation, but, you know, to keep uh, the conversation going, we nevertheless say, well, if you want to see, for example, limitations on uh, surveillance by secret services uh, without any suspicion, uh, please go through the laws of some of our member states, and you will find 
very good examples and you will find uh, uh, not so great examples, but you will find examples which limit this type of activity much more severely uh, than they are seem to be limited uh, in, in U.S. law. And uh, we have pointed this out uh, to our colleagues uh, in the U.S. Um, on the question of um, private um, uh, involvement or not, it's a fact-finding mission we're having, so we're having not, uh, let's say, discussions on uh, uh, you know, what would be alternatives and, and so on, but uh, uh, you know, we are asking for clarifications how the U.S. government makes sure that private data which may be uh, collected in the content of, uh, context of surveillance activities is not used by private contractors uh, for, for other purposes. Mr. Weidenholzer's question on the time uh, uh, frame, um, the U.S. has offered uh, uh, another meeting in the next week's date to be determined. Um, uh, we hope very much we will be able to return to uh, many of the questions you have raised here today, namely the scope of the activities, how many Europeans are uh, actually concerned, what are the limitations of these activities, and why are these Europeans targeted in you know, or why are they subject of bulk collection, for what purposes. We hope also to return uh, to the other side of the coin of proportionality, namely how successful are these programs where we have also asked a lot of questions and have not received anything beyond what is in the newspapers. Um, after uh, this uh, further meeting, we will have to see what the situation is, but the Commission intends to report in writing uh, before uh, the end uh, of the year. Indeed, I can confirm there are uh, very different understandings of uh, many issues um, um, as the emphasis on oversight uh, has for, for this meeting has uh, shown there is, uh, I would say, a rather self-referential uh, understanding in the U.S., uh, um, namely, you know, the most important question, is it legal under U.S. law? And we were happy to listen this time, but we have made it clear uh, that the concern of uh, Euro European citizens is not mainly whether activities are legal under U.S. law, but uh, the concern is that the, our citizens, which have, been, have fundamental rights because they are Europeans, that their rights are protected, and, and we have to therefore understand the scope of the activities of the U.S. as far as they may be infringing on rights of Europeans. And I think this message has been made uh, a number of times. Um, now, as to the questions on uh, uh, TFTP by uh, Mrs. Lutford, I would like to uh, refer this question to uh, Mr. <coughs> Priebe, who is my colleague from DG Home, Director for Internal Security. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, just very briefly, because the subject has been discussed in detail this morning, let me first um, add to the information which you have uh, gotten that also in this ad hoc group, of course, we raised our deep concerns about allegations as to uh, side channels uh, uh, besides uh, TFDP and referred to uh, the ongoing consultation. So, of course, there is a link between uh, this consultation and the broader discussion we are having in the ad hoc group. Um, as Commissioner Malmström said this morning, uh, we have questions in relation to Mr. Cohen's letter, and they are exactly those questions uh, you have raised, and they need to be clarified in the process of consultation. It's impossible to say more at this stage. Uh, uh, you cannot expect me to tell you more on an ongoing consultation yeah, than Commissioner Malmström told you this Mr. morning. Mr. Priebe, if I may intervene, because I think the question is, if the allegations were true, would that, in your view and your lawyer, would that constitute a breach? More than that, because Mr. Cohen's letter acknowledges, I won't use the word admits, because it acknowledges freely, assertively, that SWIFT data is obtained outside the context of the TFTP agreement. If that is true, is it a breach? Was it the collective view of the Commission? I specifically wanted to ask Mr. Nemitz, actually. Okay, okay. The, 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 question, the question is clear, but whether it's Mr. Prieb or Mr. Nemitz to answer, we would like to hear your view. Would that be Is the TFTP meant to be exclusive? Okay, 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 it's clear. I have understood the question, Madam, and uh, you will understand that, uh, as has been said by Commissioner Malmström this morning, 
This will be subject of further consultations for us, maybe for you. No, uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Priebe, that was not the question. You did yes. not understand the question. The question was, if, you know, if somebody breaks into a shop, is that theft? You're, we're asking you for your legal opinion. Uh, we're not asking you, to, you know, to, to say whether or not the allegations are true, but if it is, if it is indeed true, if data are retrieved outside the TFTP agreement, in your view, would that be a breach of the agreement? It's a legal issue. If somebody breaks into a shop, is a theft. If the Americans have violated the agreement, will will be clarified in the ongoing consultations. I can't okay, say so you're basically more. not answering the question. Yes. That's, that's a statement. Okay, the Commission is not answering the question. Thank you. Mr. Nemitz, do you want to answer the other questions? Um, I think uh, the other questions, uh, maybe these were not questions, these were statements, but, but please let me know uh, if I have um, um, forgotten to answer a question. Which one was that? No, no, I just clarify what maybe was not perceived as a question. So, regarding economic espionage and so on, what guarantees have the Americans given us that they are not doing it? What procedures do they have that ob information obtained okay. Okay. will not question be used for economic question espionage? Is clear. The answer to this is none. We have received oral assurances, and there is a statement on the record by President Obama that the United States is not doing it. But we have been not further explained how in the law uh, this is excluded, or for that matter, what security systems are in place uh, to make sure that, in particular, private contractors, who play a very important role in analyzing data which has been collected, do not use them for other purposes. Thank you very much. That's clear. Thank you, gentlemen, um, for your presentations and answering the questions, and uh, I think we'll see you again. That brings us to uh, session three of today, exchange of views with uh, U.S. civil society, which was